you know, runners who have greater levels of strength, stability, balance, range of motion, and then most importantly, control of that range of motion, they tend to not get injured as much and they tend to naturally just run with better mechanics, which is exactly why today I'm gonna share my three favorite single leg exercises that really every runner should do. They should be able to perform. If they can't perform, they should be working on these things and they should be adding them in on a regular basis. Let's get started with number three. And uh, oh yeah, Coach Nate, running experience, but you know me. Okay, so my first favorite exercise that I love to do is the single leg deadlift. It's just a great way to introduce this notion of balance, stability, and then we can introduce some very cool things about being able to hinge and load our hips effectively so that we're not putting a lot of effort and weight into our quads and our knees and we're getting it much more in our hamstrings and our glutes, which is really that key thing. What's up, Nordug? So I'm gonna start standing tall here and I'm gonna notice that as soon as I stand tall, my foot has to balance and stabilize like crazy. My foot's kind of squirming around a little bit as I go back and forth. And I wanna make sure that all of a sudden, I'm my foot's really starting to work in a, in a good way. Now notice that even when I'm just with both feet on the ground, this is already happening. You already are actively pressing those big toes into the ground just to keep yourself upright. I'm on like unstable surface right now, so my foot is gonna have to work a little bit. And that's just the first step that we're getting here. The second thing again, once I have that, is can I just get more comfortable here? Can this start to feel a little bit better? And then can I start to introduce um, this ability to hinge at the hip? Now a lot of times when we uh, bend over for things on the ground, this is why I love deadlifts so much, is that we tend to reach and round through the low back. And if I'm reaching and rounding through the low back, you know, my low back is rounded, as you can see. It's not a very good athletic position. I've just sort of lost my posture. So what I wanna be able to do instead is hinge at the hip by keeping that back nice and straight. So same thing, if I had two arms or two hands, I'm gonna hinge, 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 hinge like this. So all of a sudden back stays nice and straight like this. Now can I do that on one leg? So I'm gonna kick back, kick back, kick back, kick back, kick back. And all of a sudden, boom, I'm in my hamstrings and my glutes in a big way. My knee, notice that my knee doesn't really bend forward or bend that much at all. It stays pretty darn straight. And I get all this lovely engagement back through here, which totally is the win. So single leg deadlift, my third most favorite. Start off with three sets of five to 10 reps. It could be no weight, and all of a sudden you could add a dumbbell or a kettlebell in there too. Now it's been said that running is a single leg exercise and it's really a series of single leg jumps or hops. So let's bring in single leg hopping as my number two favorite single leg exercise. Guys, this is so good. It's so good for developing not only that balance in a more dynamic way, not only is my foot planted, but I'm having to jump and land and figure out how to absorb that shock in a nice smooth way and then also maintain my balance but it starts to strengthen my feet, my Achilles, my calves as well. Because every time I jump and land, those guys take that load. They have to figure out, hey, how do I be stable without my foot collapsing and dropping in this way? And then can I do this back and forth where I have that nice, efficient, mechanical spring, right? Our feet are springs at the end of the day. I can go laterally and I could also go vertical back and forth this way. And either way, Working on sets of 10 to 20 reps is such a great thing for us to start. It does get into your feet a lot, so make sure that you're strengthening these guys. You are getting a little bit extra mobility in there to, to uh, ease them up. But uh, they're so key for runners. It's why we put them in all of our programs, which by the way, you can start immediately doing by downloading our app, which is in the link right below. But again, three sets, 10 to 20, single leg hops per side. This way, you could also mess around going forward backward. You could get brave and you could start going over bigger objects. Finally, let's get into our number one favorite exercise. My favorite exercise is something called the shrimp squat. And it's like doing a backwards lunge, but instead of dropping onto your toes, which is kind of where we start, where my toe hits first, then my knee drops down, what I start to do is move in a way where I'm just dropping down onto having my knee 
and my toe hit at the same time. So all of a sudden that gets a little bit deeper like this, coming back up tall. And then eventually dropping down to that my knee on the back touches, boop, and then I have to come back up all the way. It's really, really hard. In fact, for a lot of people who are good at pistols, right, doing a pistol squat where I'm just gonna squat down this way all the way to the bottom. This is a little bit more range of motion, but sometimes I get a lot of bounce there. And this pistol squat or this shrimp squat for a lot of people is more difficult. That's one of the reasons why I like it. I also like it for my runners because we get a little bit more control and a little more progression. So there's three steps to this uh, little squat here. Number one, can I drop down where it's just knee slightly hits and then or so toe slightly hits first and then my knee then come back up tall then can i drop down where that my toe and my knee hit at the same time notice i have to reach a little bit more forward with my body that gets a little harder i've got a little bit deeper notice i've had to reach back really far with my hips so again just like that single leg deadlift a lot of load in the hamstrings and the glutes and then finally that last one can i reach back and just not drop that toe to the ground at all. Oh God, that's so deep. So deep down here and then I have to come back up and all the way up tall. That is my favorite exercise. We don't necessarily need to do high repetitions for this one to work. Three sets of four to six reps per side. You can really play with you know, the depth and the challenge. Notice, you're always gonna have control of the top half of the movement. It's gonna be that bottom piece where we tend to drop to the ground. Now, I'm on some soft surface, so if I were to drop to my knee, not a big deal, but we like our kneecaps as runners. We wanna keep them, they're helpful, so let's make sure we don't smash our kneecaps to the ground. Now, with all these exercises, the single leg deadlift, the, um, the lateral line jumps, and the vertical and forward backward line jumps, and the shrimp squat, some of the collapses and issues are the same. For all these exercises, number one, I wanna make sure that my hips stay nice and level. And look at my knees. Notice that all of a sudden, if I collapse through the hip, my knees start to touch. So it doesn't matter if it's the single leg deadlift, or if it's my little line jump where this starts to happen, or the shrimp squat, all of a sudden, I start to see a little bit of a collapse here. It's the same mistake. So I wanna make sure that my hips stay nice and level and hiked up. That's such a key thing. For all these exercises, notice that from the single leg deadlift, hips are going backwards. From the even line jumps, I'm kind of in that athletic stance where my hips are back a little bit. And then the same thing with my shrimp squats, I'm loading my hips back this way. So all of a sudden, I have that load up of my hamstrings and my glutes. All of those things are so key for building the type of movement patterns we need to be strong, stable runners. And look, I don't know what the magic number is for doing these things, but I do know that if you add these in more regularly, like all of our runners do in our run experience programs, which you can get a, a link to our app download and start doing those programs today if you want. It's kind of cool to have this level of strength and conditioning and mobility built into your run programs. Um, but it's to start doing them, right? Start doing them twice a week at least. I think it's very reasonable for runners to do two times a week strength and conditioning, and especially working on these three strength and conditioning exercises, these three key single leg exercises for runners. Remember, if you wanna to continue to strengthen your legs, well, you gotta pay attention to those feet in particular, which is why Coach Morgan made this great video on how to strengthen your feet with a couple great exercises playing right over my shoulder. Get in there, get going, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Nora's single leg strength exercise right here. Go, go, go.